with any un under bottom inside clutch on the top. Good day, guys, and welcome to midterms. This is another pre-recorded lecture on Law 1043, and this midterms, we will talk about the banking laws, starting with the PDIC, or the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation Act of 1963. I have given you an assignment to read RA 3591, or the old PDIC Act, as well as the new Republic Act number 10846, which talks about the new PDIC Act with all the amendments thereof. And of course, I have also given you an assignment to digest on one page case GR number 170290 of April 11, 2012, talking about PDIC versus Citibank. But enough for that, let's go to our actual topic. The PDIC, also known as the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation, was created as a charter in 1953 by virtue of the law RA 3591, providing the charter for the PDIC. And its primary mandate is to ensure deposits of all banks which are entitled to the benefits thereto. The latest amendment to RA 3591 was RA 10. 846 as of May 23, 2016. So it was after 63 years that PDIC has given, was given an amendment to ensure and to further strengthen um, deposit insurance in the Philippines for the safety of the depositing public. The salient provisions of RA10846 include quicker access to insured deposits such that quicker access to insured deposits such that um, they are given or the depositing public are given quicker access to the deposit insurances that the PDIC is affording to the depositing public in case of a bank, in case of a bank closure. So it uh, eliminated the risk of bureaucracy and eliminated as well the inconveniences that may uh, arise uh, in favor of the depositing public. We also have creditor recovery options such that um, the creditors of the different banks and financial institutions that are facing closure shall be given recovery options in which case they can, um, they can recover as much of the credit as they need um, from the bank or from an insolvent financial institution. Enhanced early intervention. Yes, dito pumapasok ang tinatawag nating financial rehabilitation in which a bank that is pending closure or a bank that is um, in dire need and is facing um, issues of solvency um, may still have the chance not to be closed by the monetary board but instead may be given intervention by the PDIC via financial rehabilitation techniques in order to save the bank from further harm. And lastly, the 90-day receivership has already been removed. This is as well for the convenience of the um, depositing public. Now, what are the primary functions of the PDIC? Sa batas ho, merong tatlong mandato si PDIC. Ano ho ang tatlong mandato na yon? Una ay ang deposit insurer. PDIC acts as the deposit insurer of the depositing public in the Philippines. At ito po ang primary at ito po ang kaisa-isa at bukod tanging mandato ng PDIC. It is to promote and safeguard the interests of the depositing public by providing permanent and continuing insurance coverage on all insurable deposits. Meaning, uh, makikita nyo ho dito na ang PDIC or ang insurance na ibinibigay ni PDIC sa depositing public ay permanent at continuing. So if you are a depositor 
if you started out as a depositor at a legitimate bank that is covered by the PDIC, to which I know naman na kapag major banks yan, especially mga um, trusted banks and those legitimate financial institutions here in the Philippines, they are covered by PDIC. So if you started a deposit with them, okay, you are being given already the benefit of the PDIC. As be, uh, the moment you became a depositor of a PDIC accredited bank, Okay, you are already um, insured by the PDIC. And this insurance is permanent and continuing, meaning kahit na mag-iba-iba man yung amount ng iyong um, savings, kung magbago man ang, ang type ng savings mo from savings to current, okay, um, as long as it is a legitimate bank deposit that is covered and regulated by the PDIC, kahit na short-term deposit man yan, time deposit, okay, checking, demand, lahat po nang yon ay covered pa rin ng PDIC and it is continuing. Continuing in a sense na tuloy-tuloy ho ang coverage ni PDIC sa inyo. And of course, permanent. Provided, of course, na kapag depositing public ka, you are in good faith. Diba? You are in good faith. Kasi there are instances that your um, right to a deposit insurance can be um, revoked and Worse, it can also cause uh, criminal offense and criminal penalties on your part as a depositor, especially if you are in bad faith. Okay, especially if you are in bad faith. Pero kapag um, nasa mabuting lagay ka naman, diba, uh, makakaasa ka na kapag in the event of a bank closure, PDIC has your back. Okay, PDIC has your back. Now, aside from being a deposit insurer, PDIC is also known to be a co-regulator of banks. Ngayon ho, alam, alam ho natin na ang mga banko ay nasa pangangasiwa ho ng Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas. Yes, the Monetary Board and the BSP is the prime, uh, is the prime regulator of the banks here in the Philippines. Okay, PD, uh, PDIC. Uh, BSP and the Monetary Board is actually under the Department of Finance and the Department of Finance oversees every banking institution as well. And PDIC is also mandated to be a co-regulator of banks wherein they also have the power alongside the Monetary Board and the um, Banco Central ng Pilipinas to examine and to investigate um, banks, especially in the event of a pending closure. So if naging insolvent si bank, or if magli-liquidate si bank, um, if magli-liquidate si bank, um, it is also a function and it is also a right of PDIC to regulate, okay, to uh, examine and investigate the banks, okay. So those are the two main functions of PDIC, and the lastly, of course, is to become a receiver and liquidator of closed banks. So kapag ho na napatawan na ho ng closure order ni monetary board ang mga na, ang isang banko for example si PDIC ho ang bahalang tumanggap sa mga bangkong ito okay ang mga banko ang tatakbuhan niya ay si PDIC at si PDIC ho ang magko-cover ng mga insured deposits ni um, bank na nag-close plus of course they will um, handle as well, PDIC will handle as well the liquidation process of the closed bank. Okay, so those are the three main functions of the PDIC to ensure, to co regulate, and to receive and liquidate. Now, for the insurable deposits, ano nga ba ho yung mga tinatawag nating insured or otherwise known as the insurable deposits? Insurable, de insurable deposits are any amount due to any bona fide depositor for the legitimate deposits in any insured bank, net of any encumbrances or obligations that the depositor has to the bank. Okay, ulitin ho natin. Una, ano ang insurable deposit o kung ano ang deposit na pwede at um, covered ng PDIC. Ito ho ay ang mga... Um, Ito ho ay ang mga amount na deposit ni depositor provided that the deposit should be a legitimate deposit in a legitimate in a 
legitimate insured bank. So typically, yung mga deposits natin sa mga banko, as long as they are, of course, legitimate and we are in good faith. So say for example, ako, meron akong savings account na inopen sa BPI. Okay? Or sige, hindi. Medyo unreasonable kasi yung BPI kasi ang BPI ay um, sobrang ano, sobrang um, ano tawag dito? Sobrang solvent yan. Uh, walang ano, walang walang <laughs> means for it to become insolvent in the future and possibly face closure. Sige, um, ano na lang tayo? Um, say, isang rural bank dito sa Alcala. Kasi dito sa Alcala may, nag, may isang nag-close na rural bank eh. So nalugi siya. And then yung bank ho na yun, syempre, um, it was covered as well by PDIC, thankfully. So nakapag, nakapag ano ho, nakapag claim ho yung mga legitimate depositors doon sa mga deposits nila. Courtesy of PDIC, of course. Diba? Um, ngayon, okay, ngayon, I have a deposit worth 250,000 and this 250,000 is a savings account. Okay, a savings account. Um, tanong, uh, will it be covered by the PDIC? Of course. Diba? Of course. As long as um, yung banko na yon is covered by PDIC. So nasa pangangasiwa po siya ni PDIC. Covered po siya ng, cover, ng insurance ni PDIC. And of course, the deposit should be legitimate. So mga savings account na in good faith naman, legitimate naman. No? And, it, and we are using safe and sound um, bank practices. Then, um, the, the, then basically, yung Um, deposit na yon will be covered by the PDIC. Okay, pero hindi doon nagtatapos. Paano ho kung may liability ako doon sa banko na yon? Okay, so um, nangutang din ako, may loan ako uh, sa, sa banko na yon. Okay, alongside my deposit of 250,000 pesos, meron pala akong loan na 100,000 kay banko. Yung loan ho na yon ay i-offset po doon sa deposit na meron ako para makita yung net deposit. At yung net deposit ho na ito, yun ang insured by the PDIC. So, so doon sa example natin kanina, um, I have a deposit worth 250,000. And at the same time, doon sa banko na yun, I have a liability or a loan worth 100,000. So the net deposit is 150,000. Etong 150,000 lamang po na ito ang magiging um, insured by the PDIC. Okay? So tandaan, ang tinata ang hinahanap po ni PDIC ay ang net deposit. Net deposit ho, meaning any amount of legitimate deposit net of any encumbrances or obligations the depositor has. So parang assetless liability lang din siya. Is equal to equity. O, oh, di ba? Ganon. Please take note that as of, to, as of this moment, okay, as of this moment, guys, ang coverage po ng PDIC ay 500,000 pesos. 500,000 ho ang PDIC coverage limit. Meaning, um, insured ho ang mga deposits natin but only up to 500,000. Okay, wala na pong labis. Wala na pong lalabis doon. Yun na ho ang maximum. Okay, yun na ho ang maximum. As of now, yan guys, ha? As of now. Pero pwede pa yung magbago actually. Pwede pa yung magbago. Yan. So, um, let's go to the next uh, topic. The PDIC covers the following. So, Ano daw ho ang mga saklaw ni PDIC? Una, syempre, ang pinaka-common dyan at pinaka-obvious would be savings deposit. Okay, savings deposit, including of course, special savings. Including special savings. So kapag sinabi natin savings deposit, ito yung mga um, typical na bank deposits natin, mga bank savings natin. The majority of our parents have this. Or if not lahat ng parents natin, meron dito. And I bet, of course, some of the students here as well are also having or also have a savings deposit where they save their hard-earned money. Okay, so that is also that is actually covered by the PDIC in the event of a bank closure. 
Next, we have a demand slash checking account. Ano, ha, ano nga ba ho itong demand or checking account? Ano po ang pinagkaiba ni demand slash checking account? Okay, ano ho ang pinagkaiba ni demand and checking account doon sa savings deposit? Si demand and checking account ho ay actually um, also another type of deposit pero iba ho siya kay savings. Okay, iba ho siya in the, in the sense that they have a different function. Si savings ho kasi, okay, it is responsible for saving your money in a deposit. Okay, ang demand slash checking account naman po ay ginagamit for um, whenever um, whenever we want a quick fund for us to check, okay, to check, anong tawag dito? To check a negotiable instrument too. So, kaya siya tinawag na checking kasi dito tayo nagda-draft ng uh, mga checks for immediate payment. So, Uh, kaya siya tinawag na demand slash checking account kasi um, accessible, siya on, accessible siya on demand. Eh. As long as you write a check, ibigay ni, ibigay ni holder ng check, yung check sa banko, it will immediately be given to him. The money will immediately be given to him. Parang ganun. Okay? Yun ho ang iba sa savings deposit. Magkaiba ho sila ni savings deposit. Kaya siya tinawag na demand slash checking account. And usually, ang demand account or the checking account, hindi ho siya nag-earn ng interest. Hindi ho siya nag-earn ng interest. Unlike savings deposit na nag-earn po ng interest. Kasi nga, a demand and checking account is such short-term and highly liquid. Um, ano, highly liquid, anong tawag dito? Highly liquid savings or highly liquid deposit. Okay? In a sense na dito ka nag-write ng check every now and then eh. Ito yung ginagamit mo for disbursement purposes. And therefore, ano pa yung point na kailangan siyang lagyan ng interest? Kasi nga, in the first place, it will not be subjected to time value of money kasi it will, it will ultimately be um, disbursed uh, in the immediate period of time. So, uh, contrary to a savings deposit na merong interest, si demand or checking account, wala ho siyang interest. Next, we have the negotiable order of withdrawal. Ngayon, negotiable order of withdrawal is also um, halos pareho lang siya with a demand or a checking account. Ang, kaiba nga, ang kaibahan nga lang ho, si negotiable order of withdrawal or also known as now um, has a bears interest. Okay, it bears interest and it's more long term. It's more long term. Ito naman ay para sa mga withdrawals or para sa mga um, disbursements that are Non-recurring. Non-recurring meaning hindi siya madalas ginagawa. While on the other hand, demand slash checking account is really for operations. Diba? Kung mapapansin nyo, diba, kapag mga companies, lalo ni mga um, nag-e-employ ng tinatawag natin na impressed cash system. So kapag impressed cash system, ano na kasi yung ibig sabihin nun? That all disbursements should be made in check and that all deposits shall be made in tap. So lahat ho ng deposits as one na gagawin. So let's say yung mga collections sa isang buong araw, i-collect ho yan, i-i-combine uh, ho yan lahat. I-accumulate lahat and isahang ilalagay sa banko. And of course, um the impress fund system suggests that we should use cheque kapag nagdi-disburse tayo ng mga um expenses natin. And yung disbursements ho na yon in check, these are um, cash disbursements in operations and si demand or checking account ho ang may pakanan nun. Well, on the other hand, kapag now or negotiable order of withdrawal, um, non-recurring transactions naman ho ang mga dumadaan dito. So say, um, anong tawag dito? Mga, mga non-recurring transactions like investments, okay, um, payment of liabilities or long-term liabilities, expansion, capital expenditures, etc. Certificate of time deposits. Okay. Ito, ano naman ho itong time deposit? Pa bakit siya tinawag na time deposit? Okay. Ang time deposit po, it is a deposit which is locked by time. Okay. Locked. As in nakalock ho siya by time. Kaya siya tinawag na time deposit. Okay. Um, ito ay yung deposit na hindi basta-basta pwedeng i-withdraw kasi okay, it will be um, non-withdrawable for a particular amount of time. Kaya siya tinawag na time deposit. So for a certain period of time, i-deposit mo siya 
at hindi mo na siya pwedeng ilabas okay, until such time na matapos na yung period na nakalagay doon sa time deposit contract natin. So say for example, we have a 12-month time deposit. Okay? Um, Nag-start ako ng time deposit noong January 1. Okay? At an amount of 10,000 pesos. And then for 12 months, hindi ko siya pwedeng galawin. Until such time na matapos yung 12 months na yun, December 31, I will be able to hold or take a hold of the 10,000 that I deposited sa banko. Of course, with interest. Ano naman kaibahan niya with savings deposit? Usually kasi kapag mga time deposits, mas, mala, mas malaki yung interest. Mas malaki yung interest. Uh, as opposed to a savings deposit na mas konti lang yung interest. Ang disadvantage nga lang kasi minsan nung time deposit is kapag may emergency need tayo. Diba? So like, if need natin ng pera agad-agad, hindi natin siya pwedeng i-withdraw. So just make sure na kapag gagawa ko kayo ng time deposit in the future, make sure that you will... Um, that you ensure that these uh, the money that you will be investing or the money that you will be putting in a time deposit uh, is not uh, kumbaga parang hindi siya kailangan so parang um, spare money lang talaga siya that you want to grow and invest in a time deposit para mas kumita in terms of interest um, don't expect it to be um, withdrawable okay so make sure that you don't have an immediate need, in the, especially in the future. Lalong lalo na if you are to uh, deposit in a time deposit. And lastly, of course, foreign currency deposits. Okay, or FCDUs, foreign currency deposit units. Itong FCDU naman ho, parang pareho lang din siya with savings deposit, except for the fact that they are denominated in foreign currency. Yes, guys. May mga ganun hong product ang mga banks here in the Philippines. So aside from offering peso deposits where they are, the, uh, they are obviously denominated in Philippine peso, they are also um, providing for foreign currency deposits. Sobrang maganda ito for OFWs who want to start their own um, savings deposit in the Philippines but then uh, in the form of the foreign currency they, that they're working on. So, say, mga dollar deposits, ganyan, all of those are also insured by the PDIC as long as, of course, it is, a, it is covered by or it is an insured bank or a bank that is covered by the PDIC. Okay? Ayan. So we have made mention a while back that the 500, that um, as of now, the PDIC has set a limit um, on the maximum insurance amounting to 500,000. Question, can the 500,000 limit be adjusted in the future? Okay, the, can the 500,000 limit be adjusted in the future? The short answer would be a yes. Okay, yes, it can be adjusted. Pwede po siyang itaas, pwede po siyang ibaba, but most probably, especially if there are worsening conditions, uh, most probably itataas ang 500,000. Pero nakadepende yan sa mga, um, ano, sa mga um, factors na ito. So the monetary board may seek to adjust the amount of coverage as necessary for a certain period. So um, pwede lang din na yung 500,000 ay itaas on a temporary basis. So um, only pertaining to a certain period, say 2013 to 2014 or 2000 21 to 2022 just to curb the effects of the pandemic for example diba? and of course for certain deposit products so my discretion din si monetary board sa kung sino ang papatawan niya ng um, limits kung magkaano ang limit ganyan however kailangan present yung tatlong ito number one the presence of a condition that threatens the monetary and financial stability of the entire banking system or also known as the systemic risk. So, kung may mga ano, kung may mga condition, kung may mga circumstances, kung may mga troubles ang isang economy that may lead, that is likely to um, threaten the monetary stability and financial stability of the entire banking system. Take note, entire banking system, meaning yung buong sistema ng banking here in the Philippines ay na may um, risk na mapilayan as a result of this condition. Okay? As a result of this condition. Dapat ho, may ganong scenario. Yun yung una. Number two, 
syempre kailangan ng unanimous approval ng board of directors ng PDIC. And of course, dapat ang nag-chair nung meeting na yon ay si um, Department of Finance. And lastly, of course, the approval of the President of the Philippines. Okay? Ano nga ba ho yung systemic risk? Okay? Systemic risk, according to PDIC Charter, Section 22, is number one, the failure of one bank that may trigger a chain reaction among other banks. Okay? Kasi kailangan yung maintindihan that banks are interconnected um, in a kumbaga in a web, okay? In a web for example. In which case hindi natin maiiwasan na ang downfall ng isang banko ay pwede or maaaring maging downfall ng ibang banko. Kasi they are creditors and lenders of each other, kung tutuusin. 'Di ba? They are creditors and lenders of each other. So kapag pumalya yung isa, syempre yung um, credit ng isang banko doon sa bank na yon ay uh, magiging uh, kumbaga ano tawag dito? Ay magiging worthless din. Okay? It will also be in danger. And if this happens na yung um, insolvency ni isang bank ay magkakost din ng, prov- ng trouble sa isang bank, sa another bank na yon Okay? Um, It can also lead to that bank being insolvent or will also likely face um, financial troubles. Okay, it's not just the two banks. Yung mga banks that are connected to these two banks will likely be affected as well and so on and so forth until such time na yung buong financial system na natin ang mapipilayan. Okay? And of course, it is also the likelihood of sudden and unexpected collapse of confidence in a significant portion of the banking and or the financial system. So as a result of this um, chain reaction in um, general shutdown of normal clearing activities of banks, nawawalan ng con- uh, may likelihood na mawalan ng confidence ang, mang- ang mga tao, especially the depositing public, sa banking and financial system natin. And as a result, di ba, may mga taong magpupull out ng kanilang investments, ng kanilang savings, and this will spell a downfall on the economy of the country. Okay, yun ho ang systemic risk. Which is why, iniiwasan ito ng monetary board at a constant manner. Hindi nyo lang alam, pero every now and then, the PDIC along with the other um parts of the Department of Finance that is Banco Central, Monetary Board, um, BIR, okay, Bureau of Treasury, lahat ko sila, they are looking for ways to stabilize the economy of the Philippines um, via um, continually studying okay, the monetary and the fiscal policies that are in place in the Philippines right now. Okay? And isa po yun, isa po, isa po doon ang whether or not kailangan itaas ang 500,000 threshold. Okay. Now, who are covered by the PDRC? Siyempre, ang covered ng PDIC ay mga legitimate banks only. Legitimate banks. Leg- legitimate banks that are engaged in the business of receiving deposits as of enactment of law and all the future banks. So um, the PDIC was enacted 1963. Okay. And of course, um, all, uh, all the banks that are existing at the time of the enactment of the PDIC, which are legitimate, okay, legitimate and that are engaged in receiving deposits. So talagang ang primary job nila is to be a bank and to be um, holders of the depositing or the deposits of the depositing public as of the enactment of the law. And of course, lahat ho ng mga banks in the future, okay, all future banks are covered by the PDIC. Okay. Now, who are not entitled to the PDIC payments? 
okay, who are not entitled to the PDIC payments. Ito na yung sinasabi ko na revocation of the PDIC um, privilege or the PDIC insurance um, grant. The PDIC insurance grant. Kapag meron ho ang mga following um, scenarios. Una sa lahat ay ang pinaka grabe na form of revocation and it will also be um, a result of a criminal offense. Ano ho yun? Splitting. What does splitting tell us? Splitting happens when, number one, a deposit account with more than 500,000 outstanding balance is broken down and transferred to two or more accounts in the name of persons or entities who have no beneficial ownership in the transferred deposits in their names. Number two, it, the splitting happened within 120 days before or during a bank declared holiday or immediately preceding closure. Immediately... Um, Proceeding closure. Yan. Okay, we continue. And of course, for the purpose of availing maximum deposit insurance coverage. So ang main, main goal lang talaga ho ng splitting is to, um, is to ano, ang, ang goal is to, ano, to maximize the deposit insurance coverage by splitting one big um, deposit into different small deposits para ma-ensure na covered ho sila ng PDIC lahat. So, pwede mong ipangalan yung portion ng savings mo kay sa anak mo. Pwede mong i, ipang, ipapa, ipangalan yung ibang portion sa lola mo, yung ibang portion sa mga magulang mo, and yung iba na natira sa'yo. Okay? Hindi ho pwede yon Hindi ho pwede yon Lalong-lalo na kapag ginawa mo yun, um, immediately before okay, a closure. So, Siguro naradaran mo na malulugi na yung uh, yung bank. Sig naradaran mo na may uh, na in the future mag uh, in the near in the very near future magkakaroon na ng bank closure for the uh, for the given bank or for the said bank. If that happened guys, if that happened um at nag-split ka talaga at nalaman ho ng um, ano, nalaman ng nalaman ng PDIC at for sure malalaman at malalaman nila kasi they have investigative power. Ang ginagawa po kasi nun is to uh, examine every um, transactions, specifically bank openings, immediately preceding a closure order. So kapag nalaman nila na may transfer na nangyari, so withdrawal, deposit, withdrawal, deposit, at the same amount, dun nila makikita na may splitting na nangyari. At kapag nangyari yun, okay, ire-revoke po ng PDIC yung deposit insurance na meron ka. Plus, kakasuhan ka ho ng isang criminal offense because splitting is a criminal offense because it is considered to be an offense in bad faith. Okay? May penal liability ho tayo kapag nag-splitting tayo just to maximize the deposit insurance coverage. Okay? So in the near future, wag na wag yung balakin na i-split ang deposits ninyo in the event of a closure. Okay? Ang pwede nyong gawin is to withhold, withdraw your ano withdraw your money okay na yon withdraw your money withdraw your money okay next okay madami pang mga ano madami pang mga hindi entitled sa PDIC payments ano yung mga yon number two, deposit products or money placements by the head office of a for, of a foreign bank in the Philippines because there is only one entity. So dito na pumapasok yung case digest ninyo, guys. Si PDIC versus si Citibank. So you are alleged, uh, PDIC was alleging that um, they should have the power to, um, anong tawag dito? They should have the power to examine and to uh, investigate um, Citibank here in the Philippines. 
okay, City Bank here in the Philippines for any possible um, closure and insolvency issues. However, um, City Bank purported that they are not an independent bank in the Philippines. Instead, they are just a branch of a global bank or, or, or of a foreign bank and they are only under one entity. So nanalo ho dito si Citibank. Hindi ho ba? Nanalo ho dito si Citibank. Okay, take note na hindi ho sa klaw ng PDIC Philippines ang deposits ng mga um, um, ano tawag dito? Ng mga foreign bank na may branch here in the Philippines. Okay? Um, ng mga branch here in the Philippines. Next, deposits that are determined to to be proceeds of an unlawful activity as defined by RA 9160. Okay? As defined by RA 9160. So, um, later on, mapag-uusapan natin tong RA 9160 when we reach AMLA. Okay? So, ano ho yung mga um, kinoconsider natin na unlawful activity as a result of AMLA? Pwede natin makuha doon. Okay? Money laundering. Ayan. Money laundering. Next, deposits payable in a place outside of the Philippines. So, um, these are also known as foreign branch deposits. Okay, hindi ho natin maikakaila that BPI has um, branches worldwide. Okay, branches worldwide. So, um, or other banks for that matter. So, may mga branches sila outside of the Philippines. Ngayon, itong mga foreign branch ho na to ay hindi sa klaw ng PDIC. Okay, yung mga deposits doon sa mga um doon sa mga branches na yon ay hindi ho sa cloud ng PDIC. Next, unfunded deposits that are fictitious and fraudulent. Napaka self-explanatory. Wala nga namang laman at wala ding totoong may-ari nung deposit na yon. Fictitious lang siya plus it has no funds at all. Okay? Um, fictitious and it has no funds at all. So, bakit mo i-entitle yan sa PDIC? Di ba? Napakasyo nga lang. <laughs> Di ba? Next, deposits emanating from unsound and unsafe business practices. This will also cause to the revocation of the PDIC um, coverage. And lastly, investment products. Okay? Investment products. Yes, ho, investment products such as bonds, trust, Okay, financial securities, hindi ho sila sa cloud ng PDIC. Only um, deposits that are considered cash and are um, deposits that are considered time, demand, or savings, etc. Okay, pero mga bonds, mga um, financial securities, ay hindi ho sa cloud ng PDIC. Okay, so yung mga shares of stocks nyo, mga Uh, investments nyo, ganyan, hindi ho sila entitled sa PDIC. Okay? Including um, including mga mutual funds, ganun, hindi ho sila entitled sa PDIC. For the very reason that the moment you um, embraced investment, di ba, you are entitled or you are um, exposed to risk and you are or you accepted to be exposed to risks. Okay? So wala siyang insurance. Okay? Wala siyang insurance. <clears throat> Now we have we have reached okay we have reached the actual determination proper okay so ito yung um ito yung highlight ng ating lesson sa PDIC okay so we have already covered what PDIC is the primary mandates of PDIC who are covered by the PDIC who are not covered by the PDIC now ang gagawin na natin is to determine the amount okay that will be Um, insured by the PDIC. Insured by the PDIC. Okay, we have rules. So we have rules. Okay, we have different rules. Rule number one natin is um, if, if there are um, deposits in different banks. If there are deposits in different banks. Kapag ho, deposits in different banks, okay, the deposit insurance is on a per bank basis. Per bank basis ho. So kapag ho, um, may mga deposits tayo in different banks, per bank basis ho ang rule natin. Tandaan, rule number one, per bank basis. Ano ho ang ibig sabihin ng per bank basis? Each deposits in each banks are separately insured. Such that 
dito sa example natin, if Maria has a deposit with ABC Bank and XYZ Bank, and in the event that both banks closed, both deposits shall be given a maximum insurance of 500,000 each. Okay, say for example, ako, may, um, anong tawag dito? May deposit ako sa BPI at may deposit ako sa BDO and both of them closed. Okay? Both of them closed. Yung deposits ko na yun, they are separately um, insured 500,000 each. So say, may 400,000 ako kay BPI at may 600,000 ako kay BDO, yung, yung BPI ko na 400,000 will be insured at 400,000. So kung mapapansin nyo, um, kung, tutu kung tutuusin, ay 100,000 na lang sana ang natira doon sa 500,000 maximum, maximum insurance ko. Pero doon kay BDO, okay, kay BDO, iba rin yun. Iba rin yung deposit insurance coverage nun. So iba yung kay BPI, iba yung kay BDO. So kay BDO, matatanggap ko yung buong 500,000. Siyempre, ano, uninsured yung 100,000 na excess. Okay, when in uninsured yung 500,000 na excess. So ang makukuha ko kay BDO is 500,000. Therefore, ang total insured deposit ko would be 900,000 from two separate banks. Yun ho yung rule number 1, the per bank basis. Ano naman ho yung rule number 2? Rule number 2 is um for deposits in the same bank. So kapag meron ho tayong mga deposits sa uh, parehong banko, Ang mag apply naman ho, per depositor, per capacity rule. So, ang ibig sabihin nun, the deposits in the same bank, in the same right and capacity of the depositor, either on his own benefit or in the name of others, shall be added together. Meaning, um, kahit na uh, um, yung mga accounts na meron ako, sa iisang bank ko lang, sa iisang bank ko lang, but in a different uh, but in the same capacity but for different beneficiaries okay but i am still the holder of which okay they will be added together at yung yung total ay masa subject sa iisang 500,000 maximum insurance limit okay and rule number 3 individual accounts in the same bank as well as account under one's ownership shall be insured at a maximum of 500,000. So, connected lang ho sila. Rule 2 and Rule 3, connected lang. So, suppose I have a bank accounts on the same bank, although same, uh, although um, different beneficiaries and um, under different names, but then again, I am the rightful holder and I have the rights and I have the uh, capacity as the depositor, okay, uh, and the capacity as the depositor, they will be added together and will be insured at a maximum of 500,000. Okay? Ano nga ba ko yung... Ano nga ba ho yung rules? Ano nga ba yung sinasabi natin sa rule number 2 and 3? Okay, dito pumapasok yung mga trust accounts. Trust accounts. So yung mga trust account guys, these are necessarily not our deposits, but our deposits in trust for another L, uh, someone else. Okay? So ito po yung rules for trust accounts. So kapag buy accounts po tayo, that is deposit of A by B, A is the depositor. Kapag naman po ITF or in trust for accounts, okay, the deposit of A in trust for B, for example, si B ho ang depositor. Okay, tandaan nyo itong mga rules na to guys. Ha? Sobrang ano to. Sobrang um, crucial ho nito. Okay? Um, how about for, account, for the account of or FAO accounts or deposit of A for the account of B or deposit of A FAO B? Okay, si B pa rin ho ang depositor. Take note that B, okay, in this particular case for um rule number 2 and 3, okay, rule number 2 and 3, um in trust for and FAO accounts, these are actually the deposits under B and uh, as under B's right and capacity. So ang may right and may capacity ho dito ay si B and not si A. 
as opposed to a buy account, na kapag buy account, si A po ang may right and capacity. But for number 2 and 3, si B po ang may capacity and my right. And therefore, should be collated with other of its other and the rest of his individual accounts. Okay? Example. Magbigay tayo ng example para ano, bomb ka. <clears throat> Ayan. So we have an example right here. Determine the insurable deposit of Mr. Jones. Okay? We have the account name, the amount of deposit, and the insurance amount. So there are different accounts of Mr. Jones that are listed here. Una, Yung account ni Mr. Jones na individual account niya na, one, na amounting to 100,000. Next, uh, meron ding um, account si Miss Jones, okay, for the account of Mr. Jones. Okay, Miss Jones found Mr. Jones. Okay, and next we have Miss Jones in trust for Mr. Jones. Okay, Miss Jones ITF Mr. Jones. Okay, and Mr. Jones store sold proprietorship na 700,000. Ang total nun is 1 million pesos. Okay. Discuss natin yan isa-isa. Yung una is an individual deposit of Mr. Jones without any um, without any trusts, without any encumbrances, etc. Yung 100,000 ho na yun ay nasa um, tamang pagmamayari lamang ho ni Mr. Jones. Okay. So the 100,000 by Mr. Jones is is at its at Mr. Jones's own right and capacity as a depositor. Next, we have Miss Jones, Fao Mr. Jones. Okay? Um napag-usapan natin kanina kapag um Fao account, okay? Fao account, yung second person ang um depositor. So in this case, si Mr. Jones pa rin ho ang depositor dito. Meaning Mr. Jones holds the right and capacity of the 100,000 deposit of the FAO account. Same is true with the ITF account. Okay, na 100,000, Miss Jones in trust for Mr. Jones. And lastly, the Mr. Jones store, sole proprietor na 700,000. 700,000. So let's just make sure na ang magiging total um, insurable deposit natin is 500,000 lang. Pwede ang optimal um, distribution natin would be 100,000 for Mr. Jones account, 100,000 for Miss Jones, FAO Mr. Jones, Miss um, 100,000 as well for Miss Jones, ITF Mr. Jones, and the, the remaining 200,000 shall be um, given to Mr. Jones' store, sole proprietor. Okay? Now, ano yung dahilan kung bakit ano? Ano yung dahilan kung bakit um, sinalik ah uh, si inad ko lahat yung um inad ko lahat i mean anong tawag dito i added all of the uh, deposits in one and insured them all together including yung sole proprietor na Mr. Jones store take note guys that the store is a sole proprietor kapag sole proprietor po walang juridical personality yung business okay meron ho siyang accounting entity yes tama but under the law Okay? It is not a distinct and separate person from its owner under the law. Wala ho siyang juridical personality. Wala ho siyang juridical personality. Kaya, ang nangangasiwa pa rin ho nung bank ay si, ay nung bank account na 700,000 ay hindi ang store ni Mr. Jones. Bagkus, okay, ang may right at may capacity pa rin ho nun ay si Mr. Jones pa rin. So, ang insurance po ni Mr. Jones' store ay 200,000 amounting to a grand total of 500,000. Okay? You can ano naman, you can um modify this to ano, you can modify this. Pero ito kasi yung pinaka-optimal where isasagad mo yung 100k na tatlo and then 200k is natira for Mr. Jones store. Ang iba naman pwedeng gawing 50k, 50k, 50k ganun um and then 350k kay Mr. Jones. Okay? Um, pero um, napaka-unfair din kasi doon sa mga FAO and ITF accounts kung sino man ang may hawak nun, di ba? So, napaka-prudent na ganito ang gawin natin. Ayan. Sometimes, um, they also do it equally, lalong-lalo na kapag equal shares ang pinag-uusapan natin. Okay? 
Ayan. So those are the rules for individual accounts. Those are the rules for individual accounts. Ngayon naman ho, okay, kailangan natin tingnan yung rules for joint accounts. Kasi hindi po natin may iwasan na sa mga banko, meron ho tayong tinatawag ng mga joint accounts. Ano ho itong mga joint accounts? Joint accounts, these are accounts which are being um, held by two or more persons jointly. Which are being held by two or more persons jointly. So, nag-joint forces po sila to create a joint account where they can contribute together to um, anong tawag ito? to maximize their deposits. Kaya ho siya tinawag na joint account. Usually, ang mga joint account, uh, nangyayari ito sa mga mag-asawa, ganyan, um, or sa mga mag-partners sa negosyo, pwede rin. Ginagawa rin ito ng mga mag-classmates. Pwede rin uh, ginagawa ng mga mag-classmates. Ganyan. Joint account. Okay, and makikita ko natin ang joint account or um, joint account is being manifested or evidenced by the use of and, or, tsaka yung and, or. So makikita nyo na dyan dito sa ating slide for today. Okay, a joint account is evidenced by the use of and, or, tsaka and, or. Ngayon, yung, um, uh, yung joint account ko na ito ay... <coughs> ay i-insure ng PDIC on a separate manner. Anong ibig sabihin ho nito? Ang ginagawa ho ni PDIC for joint accounts ay dinidivide ho niya yung mga shares. Okay? Dinidivide ho niya, na, dinidivide ho niya yung mga shares ng mga individual owners nung joint account na yun. Okay? Dinidivide ho niya. At yung mga, divide, uh, yung mga na divide ho na yun ay sinasubject sa... Um, tig-iisang 500,000 limit. Sinasubject sa tig-iisang 500,000 limit. Okay? Yun ho, yung, um, yun ho yung rule for a joint account. Ayan. So ano ho yung ano? Ano ho yung significance nito? Ano ho yung significance nito? Um, makikita ho natin na um, kapag i-divide natin yung joint account, pwedeng nakalagay sa kontrata no with the bank kung paano yung hatian doon sa joint account na yon. Yun yung susundin. Yun yung first hierarchy natin. Ang susundin natin una ay yung um, division sharing agreement ng mga um, joint account holders doon sa bank account na yon. Okay? Pero kung pag wala naman ho nakalagay na agreement, it is already presumed that the division shall be made equally. So say for example, May dalawang mag-asawa, Mr. A and Miss B. Okay? Mr. A and Miss B um, ha uh, has a joint account in BPI. Okay? Worth 1 million pesos. Worth 1 million pesos. Ngayon, kung ang nakalagay dun sa sharing contract nila is 25% um, kay Mr. A at 75% kay Miss B, syempre alam nyo na. <laughs> diba? ba? Uh, so, 25-75 ang uh, hatian. So, 25% ang mapupunta kay A and 750K ang mapupunta kay B. So, 50-50. I mean 50-50. Uh, 25-75. So, 250K kay A, um, 750K kay B. And both of these deposits, 250K and 750K, shall be um, um, subject or ano tawag ito? shall be um, insured separately shall be insured separately. So, um, mag-a-apply ho yung 500 limit doon sa um, share la pa ni A and um, yung 500 limit doon sa share din ni B. Ayan. So, yun ho ang uh, manifestation ng joint accounts that are owned um, separately by different joint uh, account holders. Pero may mga um, definite rules ho tayong kailangang sundin. Yung sinabi kong rule kanina ay rule for the individual holders. Take note guys, individual holders or mga natural persons lamang. Ibig sabihin nito, kapag ho natural persons ang owner ng joint account, kapag ho sinabi natin natural person, syempre mga tao talaga, di ba? Mga, uh, mga tao talaga. Kapag ho individual owner po yung account, uh, yung mga ano, yung ay kung natural own, natural persons po yung mga individual holders ng um joint account na ito, mag-a-apply ho yung uh, separation 
um, principle, separation principle, where they shall be divided into shares as there are joint depositors, okay, and is subject individually to the 500,000 limit. So take note na ang susundin na una ay yung um, <clears throat> deposit sharing agreement. Kapag walang ganon, equally. Equally. At nag apply lang ho sa natural persons. Take note of that. Ngayon naman ho, paano naman po kapag yung holder ng joint account ay isang corporation or a juridical person? So kapag ho, juridical person, like a corporation for example, or a cooperative for example, siya yung may hawak ng joint account. Siya yung nag-establish ng joint account, siya yung holder, siya yung may right ng joint account na yon. Okay? Kung corporate holder po, hindi ho mag apply ang separation principle. Isang 500,000 limit lang ho ang pwedeng i-allow. Kahit pa ang mga kasama ho ni corporate person na sa joint account na yon ay mga shareholders ng company or mga ibang natural person. So say um, CSM, Okay, si SM may um anong tawag dito may uh, may joint deposit na hawak sa BPI. Okay? Si SM may hawak na deposit sa BPI. Tapos yung deposit na to is ano um insured ano tawag dito? Yung deposit is insured um, by the PDIC. Now in the event of a closure, magkano ang makukuha ng mga joint account holders? Wala. Kasi si corporate, chair, uh, si corporate joint holder lang ho ang may entitlement sa 500,000 limit. Okay? Bahala na rin si corporation kung um, i-distribute niyo yung 500 doon sa different um, joint holders. Pero the general rule is, okay, kahit pa yung mga shareholders niya nakasama niya as a joint account holder doon sa um, deposit sa bank are natural persons. Okay, kapag ho juridical person ang pinag-uusapan natin, the splitting is not applicable. Now, if you ask me why, okay, if you ask me why, um, corporation yan eh, juridical person yan. Juridical person yan. It has a, it has a personality a distinct from its creditors, but then again, okay, but then again, um, they are under one entity as that with uh, his shareholders, although they have juridical personalities. Okay, yun ho yung rule for corporate um, account holders of a joint account. Meron ho tayong example dito sa kung paano yung hatian. Okay, this applies for natural persons. Okay, um, let's assume that the shares are equal. So walang profit or walang profit sharing. Let's assume that um, the shares are equal. So meaning, um, anong tawag dito? Uh, equal yung mga ano, equal yung... Um, account sharing equal yung deposit sharing. Ayan. So, makikita nyo ho dito yung uh, mga account name, joint deposit, split amount, and insured. So, take note guys na lahat ng mga to, si A and B, A or B, tsaka A and or B, ay pare-pareho lang. All of them are uh, manifestations or examples of a joint account. Be it kung ang ginamit ay and, Kung makikita nyo yung ampersand yung ganito or yung word na end, okay? or kung ang, ang ginamit ay or and ang kung ginamit ay end and or, okay? that is automatically a joint account. No exemptions. No exemptions. Joint account ko sila. Ayan. So say for example, doon sa first instance natin, ang joint deposit ni A and B ay 500,000 lang. Okay? 500,000. Yung 500,000, tapos walang ano walang um, deposit sharing agreement. So, ang split amount natin is assumed to be at equal amount of 250,000. Ngayon, magkano ang insured for each of them? As mentioned a while back, um, each of the shares of the um, individual uh, account holders of the joint deposit shall be entitled to a, a separate share or a separate deposit coverage. Uh, insurance coverage of 500,000. So, each of them shall be entitled to the 500,000 insurance. Okay? Entitled to the 500,000 insurance. So, insured ho yung ting 250,000 nila. Insured ho yung ting 250,000 nila. Kasi yun lang naman yung amount na meron sila sa banko eh. 
Okay? Hindi ko automatically na 500,000 na makukuha nila. No. Kung magkaano lang ho yung nasa banko nila, and the limit would be 500,000. Next scenario, we have 1 million. Okay? Ang split amount natin is, understandably, 500,000. And again, they are both insured at 500,000 each. And lastly, okay, our last scenario would be the joint deposit of 1,500,000. Their split amount is 750,000. Yun ho yung um, deposit share nila, if assuming equal share. At ang insurance, as mentioned a while back, ang maximum natin would be 500,000 for each person. So they are only entitled to the 500,000 um, from their um, share, okay, which is 750,000. So both of them lost 250,000 each as a result of uninsured deposits. Okay? So ang ma, ang ang na ang na kuha lang ho nila ay 500,000 each, which is the maximum PDIC deposit coverage as of this moment. Okay? So that is how splitting any split insurance work. So dito lang ho pwedeng i-apply yung tinatawag natin na splitting ha. Huwag yung gamitin, huwag yung gawin yung um, ginawa ng um, illegal splitting kanina, which is this one. You do not okay, do this. You do not do this. Okay. So let me stop sharing. And that is um, all for our discussion for today. So tomorrow naman, ang gagawin natin ay itutuloy natin na ng ating discussion sa PDIC. Itutuloy natin ang discussion natin sa PDIC. In which case, ang gagawin ho natin ay we will uh, talk about more examples on how to um, do uh, the deposit sharing and the um, computation and determining the amount of insurance and insurable deposits as well as the compliance requirements for PDIC. So titignan natin tomorrow kung um, ano at paano um, binabayaran ang mga um, claims uh, under PDIC. Okay? Paano binabayaran yung mga claims? Ayan. So, with that, um, uh, I am ending this discussion for today. So, um, for those who have not yet uh, dropped their assignments sa one-page case digest, please do so now. And for further readings, you may visit the you may visit the link um, that is being uh, that was given to you um, at the LMS, lalong lalong na yung PDIC charter for you to be familiar familiarized as well with the definition of terms, lalong lalo na sa definition of terms. Okay, um, hindi naman tayo magiging ano don, hindi naman tayo magiging uh, extensive don sa definition of terms, and um, I just want you to um, learn the definition of um closure or closed banks as well as um, deposits and deposit insurances okay para ma-familiarize ma niyo sa kung an ma familiarize niyo yung sarili niyo sa kung ano yung um, ibig sabihin ng deposits and what deposits are um, acceptable for um, PDIC insurance Ayan. so with that we end up our discussion for today we all together say a prayer um, in the name of the father son the holy spirit amen i am now inviting you to make a prayer on your own in the name of the father and the son the holy spirit amen so with that guys thank you very much for tuning in to our pre-recorded lecture and we all have a nice day Goodbye.